Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at an example of finding the curl of vector field where the change in the vector field is nonlinear. You can see here that it depends on x and y to the third power, which means that very close to the origin, the magnitude of vector field is very small, but then as you go farther away, the increase increases very rapidly according to y cubed and x cubed. When we find the curl of that particular vector field, notice that we no longer get a constant quantity. The curl does depend upon the specific position of x and y. Therefore, in order to find the curl at any point on the vector field, you have to indicate a particular point, the x and the y coordinate. So what we're going to do here is find the vector field at 3, 3, when x equals 3 and y equals 3. Since we already have an equation that tells us what the vector field is, or an expression, all we have to do is plug in the values for 3 and 3. So the curl of the vector field at x equals 3 and y equals 3, in this particular case, is going to be 3 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 squared. Now, 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. Do that twice. That gives us 54k. So the magnitude gives us the change in the magnitude of the vector field when we move in the x direction, move in the y direction at that particular spot. Now the spot we're talking about is the spot right here, which is the point 3, 3. So if we change a little bit in the x direction, a little bit in the y direction, add that together, divide by how far we change, that gives us the magnitude. And notice that the sign is positive, which means that the circulation is in a counterclockwise direction. Point your fingers in the direction of circulation, your thumb will point in the direction of the curl. So everything seems to work out. 54 is a large value because the vector field changes quickly at that particular location. Now we can also use the method we used before, but remember that method we only used when we had a linear change in the vector field. This is, of course, not a linear change, but you can see how when we make the change very small, when we make the, the path of the circulation very small, we should be able to come up with a reasonable value very close to the value of 54. So what we're going to do first is we're going to let r, so let r equals 1. We're going to move one unit to the right, one unit up, and assume that the change will be constant as it would be at that particular location. So then we can say that the magnitude of the vector field, which can be expressed like this by multiplying times the normal, which is perpendicular to the uh, plane of the vector field, which of course is parallel to the curl, and therefore that gives us the magnitude. This can be described as the change in the vector field as I change in the x direction, plus the change in the vector field as I change in the y direction, divided by the amount of the change. So let's see here. Let's change one unit to the right. So that means I go from x equals 3 to x equals 4. So how much does the magnitude of the vector field change when I move to the right by one unit in the x direction? So I can say that that means I go to 4 cubed minus 3 cubed, because I changed from the vector field, the value, um, well, I go from 3 to 4, so I go 4 cubed minus 3 cubed, and add to that how much the vector field changes when I move in the y direction by one unit, and that will also be uh, 4 cubed minus 3 cubed, and the whole thing divided by a movement of one unit. And let's see if we get a value that's close to 54. So 4 cubed, that's uh, 64 minus 27. And I add that to 64 minus 27. And I divide that by, oh, not 2, but by 1, because I only move one unit. And let's see here, 64 minus 27, that would be 34, that's 37 times 2, that's 74. And you can see that 74 isn't anywhere close to 54. And the reason why I'm off by that much is because I took a big step. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let r be smaller value. r is not going to be equal to 0 0.1. And so now I calculate the same thing. Dot n. 
and that's going to be the change in f plus a change in y divided by r. So when I go from 3 to 3.1, I take 3.1 cubed minus 3 cubed and add to that 3.1 cubed minus 3 cubed and take the whole thing and divide by 0 0.1. What is that equal to? So now, of course, I'm going to need a calculator. So 3.1 and I cube that and I subtract from that 27, so minus 27, and I do it twice, so times 2, and then I divide that by 0.1, and I get 55.82. 55.82, which is much closer to the 54 that I was expecting. Again, I'm going to make the circle smaller, and I'm going to let r equals 0 0.01, and I'm going to again find the change in the value of the vector field as I change, as I move in the x direction and move in the y direction. So this now becomes 3.01 cubed minus 3 cubed, and I do it again, plus 3.01 cubed minus 3 cubed, and divide the whole thing now by the amount of movement, which is 0.01. Let's see how close we get to 54 this time. So 3.01 cubed minus 27, multiply the times 2, and divide by 0 0.01 equals, and now we get 54.18, which of course is very close to the values of expecting. And so you can see again, when you try to find the circulation, which means the curl at any point inside your vector field, you can do it by simply calculating the vector field, which gives you an expression in terms of x and y. You plug in the values for x and y, you get the exact value. Or you can simply use the idea that if you move a certain distance in the x direction, move a certain distance in the y direction, see how much your, the magnitude of your vector field changes. And as you make that smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where the change in x and change in y becomes minuscule, in the limit, as the change goes to zero, the value you get here will be exactly the same as the value you get there. And that's what we mean by the curl. And we can use those very same principles even when the change is nonlinear. You just have to come up with very small changes in the x and the y direction. And that's how it's done.